All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to writing and art class. For this demo, we have a writing utensil and two color highlighters. Before you get started, it's very important that you do a key up at the top of your model essay of the exemplar. Um, essays are broken down into evidence, which is anything factual about the painting. A fact that you see, you observe, and then you have analysis, which are your thoughts, your thoughts about the evidence, right? So what does it mean? What do you wonder? So that's our evidence and that's our analysis. I want you to go ahead and I want you to pick a color for each, okay? It can be any color. These are gonna be my colors. And I may underline on some of my colors and bracket a little. And then for analysis, I'm gonna do yellow because it's a light, fluffy color. And my thoughts are what's really, really important. Now, when you have evidence, you wanna use a lot of art vocab, which we have in the packet and you wanna go ahead and box that. Okay, so make sure that you have uh, MLA title and then you have your title of your work, uh, essay, and then all the information right here about the work that you and your group are doing. Now remember, everyone's doing their own individual essay. First step is to describe, okay? Describe, again, is when we talk about the elements what do we see is the key question. What do we see? Maybe you don't want to write that. You're still working on the key up here. In the oil painting, the drawing lesson, so we have the title right here, Jane Steele depicts. Now, depicts, that another word for depicts could be shows. So, you wanna circle the words that you don't know and kind of define them because we're, we wanna gain academic vocabulary. Depicts a male artist instructing two pupils. Okay, the word pupils means student. A fashionably dressed young woman and a young boy. A colon is a great way to introduce a list. So these are the two main subjects in the work, subject, okay? So right here, is this a fact or an opinion? Okay, we are reading the drawing lesson, Ooh, wrong color. We are reading the painting, the drawing lesson, and this is a fact, Jan Steele is the artist, right? That's a fact, depicts a male artist instructing two pupils. One woman is well-dressed, I guess you could argue that that's opinion. And then there's a young boy, okay? There is a male artist who is a teacher. All of this is a fact. When you're writing your essay, you're, you don't need to use art vocab right away. You're just talking about what you see. The lesson is presumably taking place within the art teacher's studio, okay? I would say that that's a fact because I see a lot of studio stuff. The room is filled with plaster models that the art teacher would have. Okay, this is all evidence because this is in the painting, a fact. Plaster faces, one plaster food, plaster cow, sorry, plaster food, plaster cow, hang near the window where the light enters the studio. Okay, a lot of details, all facts, no art vocab yet, right? You just wanna first of all talk about the main subject. What is the main subject like, who are the characters? What's going on? No need for art vocab at first. A plaster angel hangs near the front ceiling. Again, this is a fact. Notice how, like, it's mostly evidence in description, right? Description is mostly evidence, right? We're just getting a feel for the painting, right? So all sorts of details. Also, it's two feet tall, male sculpture rests 
near the window. Again, a fact, maybe you could argue that it's an opinion that it's two feet tall, because you know we're kind of estimating things, but it really is evidence, right? So we're estimating things. In this sculpture, the artist is presumably drawing as the boy and women admire his skills. So that's a fact too, because they are, this is all happening. I haven't used any art vocab, right? So like what I'm seeing in your essays is you're not really describing everything in the painting. Don't worry so much about the elements yet. Now, still creates a sense of spatial depth. Here we go, we have art vocab. Spatial depth, what element of art is that? That is space. So that's element number one. By including a foreground in front of the blanket and a background containing a horizon line with an art easel in the front. Guess what? This is still all factual, right? Like he's using spatial depth. He has a horizon line. This isn't an opinion yet. The art easel is purposely smaller and surrounded by lighter values. Again, all facts. Okay, but we're, now we're talking about value. Second element of art, value. On the other hand, in the foreground, other hand, great transition words, phrases, other hand, in the foreground, the drawing lesson appears to be surrounded in mostly dark values. I'm boxing this, right? So we're talking about value right now. So two dominant elements of art, space and value, mostly facts. In the foreground, the drawing lesson appears to be surrounded by mostly dark value due to the blanket hanging behind the three main figures. Okay, the art teacher and the two students. Steele also creates perspective with a pile of objects. Let me go down. Perspective has to do with space with a pile of objects on the floor. These objects appear to be closer than there because there is more texture. Okay, so this is the third element of art I've mentioned, texture and detail in the trunk, the portfolio, canvas, and ukulele. Guess what? Mostly facts. I would argue that this is more facts. Might someone disagree with me about there being more texture? Might someone disagree? Yeah, but it's pretty factual. Okay, I mentioned three elements of art, but I really am describing what's happening. Now, let's go on to analysis. Analysis is when we talk about the principles of design. The question is, how is the work organized? The focal point of the composition is the artist who is drawing. Okay, this is an opinion. Focal point is an art vocab word. So the element right here that we're talking about is emphasis, right? Or sorry, excuse me, not element, principle, right? So the focal point of the composition is the artist who is drawing. Still creates the focal point by placing another of the bright points of interest around the artist. Okay, this is all opinion. Because you may disagree with me where the focal point is. There's two students who are staring at him. Okay, well, this is a fact. So I'm backing it up causing us to look at the drawing. Okay, that's my opinion. The fact that the students are looking at him and that's creating a focal point, that's my opinion. And the angel sculpture creates a converging line going towards the drawing activity. Okay, this is my opinion, right? Right, that the angel sculpture is pointing down. Furthermore, great transition word, steel creates a focal point because the top and bottom of the canvas and the edge of the shelf in the foreground creates converging lines pointing in the direction of the artist. 
Okay, this is all my opinion. So everyone in your group may have different thoughts on what is emphasized, right? Again, when we talk about focal point, we're talking about emphasis. You all may have different opinions. The work is unified. Okay, this, so this is my second principle. Unity, right? So you want to talk about how the artist is, how the art is one, how it's connected. Because the points of interest, okay, meaning the focal points, are surrounded in dark values found in the hanging blankets and dark walls. Okay, so there are dark walls, there's a hanging blanket. These are all facts and various shadows. But the fact that it's unified because of the dark values, because there's a repetition of dark values, that's my opinion. The dark values around the point of interest create a lot of contrast. Okay, contrast, when there's like a lot of dark and light, that would be my third principle that I'm mention, mentioning, contrast. So you wanna mention three elements, three principles in your essay. Around the point of interest creates a lot of contrast. This is all my opinion, that the dark values create a lot of contrast, especially around the artist who is wearing a white hat. Okay, the artist is wearing a white hat, okay, and that creates contrast. But the fact that the artist is wearing a white hat, that is a fact. The fact that it creates a focal point, that's an opinion. In front of the blanket, that is close to black. So I'm talking about like the difference between the white hat and the black background. This causes the viewer's eye to gravitate towards the artist. So we're gonna look at the artist because of the contrast. That's all an opinion. Okay, so I talk about three principles, unity, emphasis, and contrast. Interpretation. Okay, this is where we talk about the theme. Okay, this is where we talk about the theme. What is the artist communicating? Okay, so just like, let's stop, okay? And then look, check with your partner, like, why is it that paragraph one is more fact, we're describing what we see, paragraph two is more opinion, how it's organized. Why is there such a difference? Turn to your partner and discuss. I'll pause the video. I believe that the artist is trying to communicate. Can you take this whole sentence starter? Yeah. That a fine arts education inspires students to achieve greatness. Guys, when you are writing your essays, please underline your theme. Just make sure that you have that. So that is the theme. That is the message. Notice that it is one sentence. The theme is further supported by the visual metaphors. Can you use these sentence starters? Yes, you can actually use these sentence starters. Okay, so everyone pause, um, mark those sentence starters. Okay, let's keep going. Sorry for the noise. Settle down, come inside. Painting of the right side of the composition. Can you guys settle down? I'm teaching live. Right side of the composition, surrounded by light. Okay, so guys, I'm in a lesson right now, please. Thank you. The right side of the composition, surrounded by light. That is a fact. The light in the painting represents knowledge. Okay, so now I'm talking about visual metaphors. I'm talking about the light in the painting being a symbol for knowledge and progress. So this is supporting my theme. So you want to make sure you're always connecting back to the theme. Connecting back to the topic sentence. The fact that it symbolizes knowledge and progress, the light of the painting symbolizes knowledge and progress, that is an opinion. The darkness represents a state of not knowing. Freddie, Freddie, please settle down. Not knowing, that is an opinion too. And ignorance. The mood of the painting, 
is inspiring. Now, maybe the painting isn't inspiring for you, right? It may be that the painting's not inspired for you. So the fact that I'm saying the mood is inspiring is an opinion, okay? Is it necessarily a fact? No. You may think, you may think that the mood is happy. You may think that the mood is sad. Even though the characters, even though the characters are surrounded in dark values, the act of teaching brings light into the room. These are all of my opinions. The light is literally created by the window. Okay, so this right here, this is a fact, so that's evident. So I'm kind of like explaining my idea a little bit more. Notice how in paragraph three, fact and opinion are more weaved. The lighting in the face of both students. So there's lighting, both students have light in the face. That is a fact. But figuratively, the light on their face represents knowledge. So I'm going back and explaining my idea that light is a visual metaphor representing knowledge. All my opinion. They are gaining. The story is therefore one of a teacher giving his knowledge down to the students. I mean, this is pretty factual. You can't argue that that's not happening in the painting, but it's also an opinion too, right? So in paragraph three, you're really bending the evidence. So the evidence is working in your favor. So it becomes very opinionated. So we see a blending between fact and opinion. Perhaps both students struggle to meet success in school, but learn how to draw is giving them self-confidence. Okay, this is very much opinionated. So I really am interpreting. I'm really guessing. An interpretation is a guess backed up with evidence. I'm saying this is the message of the painting that they didn't already have. This story supported by the evidence of the student's eyes. Okay, so the students look like they're really into it right? So I'm backing it up. Their eyes are wide and open, hungry for more knowledge. More knowledge. Okay, their eyes are wide and open. They could be hungry for a sandwich, though. They could be hungry for Starbucks. They could be hungry for Chick-fil-A, right? So it's my opinion that they want knowledge. That's my interpretation. Might your interpretation paragraph be totally different? Yes, probably. Their mouths are open in astonishment. Now their mouths might be open because they have a pain in their back. And what the artist can achieve with little effort. So the fact that the kids are into the lesson is all my opinion. Okay, judgment. Notice how much longer, notice how much longer the judgment paragraph is. I believe that this is somewhat an excellent work of art because of the way the artist uses a light source. Okay, so the fact that I think the work is successful is my opinion. Shadows and paint brush strokes to create form. Okay, the fact that the artist uses a light source and creates form with that light source, that is all opinion. The three main subjects of the painting, the folds of their clothing, the paintbrushes on the table, the sculptures, and all the surrounding visual metaphors, visual metaphors, that's an art vocab word, on the floor seem, floor seem absolutely three-dimensional. Okay, I would say that that is a fact, that everything's 3D, but you could argue that it's an opinion. But the fact that all of this is in the painting is factual. So judgment, we're going back and we're looking through our essay and we're like, okay, why is this a good work? So this is the end of your argument. Okay, so again, the question is, is this a good work? How do you know? And you want to bring in aesthetic theories if you know those. Due to the slow transition of value as the artist carefully moves from hues to darker shades. 
use is a light value or a color plus white. Shades is a dark value, color plus black. So I'm going back, I'm talking about contrast. So I'm going back to my second paragraph where I talk about contrast. So you're bringing everything together. Okay, the slow transition from hues to shades, I mean, that's evidence. Steele's intention was to create a life-like work of art. I mean, that's my opinion, which can be judged through the lens of imitationalism. So remember, paragraph four, mention your aesthetic theory. It's nearly perfect. Okay, that very much is my opinion. And the fact that it's imitationalism is my opinion. Even the hands of the artist and the hands of the female students seem to be painted perfectly. Okay, this is my opinion. So I'm argue, arguing that this is a, uh, a hand that looks like a photograph. Yet, if Steele's purpose was to communicate a message and to inspire to create more art, then the painting falls short. Ooh, I'm looking at the other side transition word yet. So if the purpose was instrumentalism, I'm saying it's not good. So I'm acknowledging the other side of the argument. Even though the act of drawing, even though great, great transition word, the act of drawing and the lesson is supposed to be the focal point, so much attention is taken by the putrid dark green and orange blanket in the background. So it's important to predict the bad parts of your painting that the person is gonna argue against in the debate. It's difficult to really know where to look since the eye is distracted by the blanket. All opinion. And the strange angel, okay, the fact that I think the angel is strange is my opinion. Angel hanging above, uh, angel hanging above the lesson. There's an angel hanging above the lesson, but the fact that it's strange, that's my opinion. Fact, opinion, evidence, analysis. Regardless, great transition phrase, it's difficult to argue, great transition phrase, that the painting is superb. So I'm going back. So here I'm, arg I'm acknowledging a counter argument. I'm looking at the other side, but ending back on my opinion that it is painted in perfect perspective, art vocab, Completely three-dimensional, which has to do with form, which is 3D, and is stunningly realistic with detailed textures and patterns. All my opinion. So this is really advanced, but you want to, with your group, kind of predict the criticism, right? Be like, okay, well, I can't tell the message. So I know because everyone, we wrote this essay on our own, that I'm gonna argue that it is a good painting because of imitationalism, just in case the person argues that you, there's no real theme in this painting. Okay guys, make sure you ask me any clarifying questions. Please remember that you should have evidence analysis. You should really describe the facts of the painting, three or more elements of art, Talk about at least three principles of design. Here I talk about emphasis, unity, and contrast. Notice how I'm explaining the principles. I'm not just listing them. Make sure you have a theme backed up by visual metaphors, backed up with evidence. We could see now in the third paragraph, evidence and analysis are more woven. And make sure you mention an aesthetic theory and why it's good. Super advanced, acknowledge the counter argument. Predict how they will argue against your painting. Okay, notice how the art vocab is woven throughout the piece. If you're stuck, use your checklist. Describe, analyze, interpret judgment. Paragraph one, two, three, four. Okay, thank you for annotating.